thanks to Simply Safe for sponsoring this video. What's up, Bracket family? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is all about the Dollar Tree pizza pans. I'm gonna be sharing a bunch of DIYs and hacks in this video. I hope you guys enjoy it. If you do, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and click the bell button to be notified every single time that I upload. With that being said, let's begin. We're gonna need some pizza pans, and I'm gonna share with you guys how to do a way that's gonna be more durable, something you can use outside. The second way I'll share with you how to use just Dollar Tree products, because I know a lot of you guys wanna know how do you do things with just Dollar Tree products. The next thing we're gonna be using is a wooden crate. You can get these on sale when you're using a coupon code at Joanne Fabrics for like nine bucks. For this project, I'm gonna be using the Dollar Tree slats of wood. I'm gonna go with these because you don't have to question exactly what I'm using, and they're already cut for me, so I don't have to cut these down. And finally, from Dollar Tree, you're gonna to wanna to pick up one of their easels. I'm gonna use wood glue to attach my slats and screws. I recommend using both, but you do not have to use both. I'm gonna be using both because, first of all, it's just more sturdy to do it that way, and then second of all, I just don't wanna to have to wait for the wood glue to completely dry. So this is the 10 inch wooden slat, and I am going to place one on the side like this. The screws we're using are just various screws we got at the dollar store. And now we're just gonna drill some screws in. This is the part where you're gonna use the Dollar Tree easel, and you are going to put the base of it, I guess that's what you would call it, the part where you would put the canvas. You're gonna nudge it up to the crate, and you will either wood glue this or wood glue and screw it in. Next up, we're gonna take our pizza pans and we are going to screw them right here onto this piece of wood. Again, if you're not using power tools, you can use wood glue. Now I'm just staining my wood using my Verithane stain in Early American, my absolute favorite stain. And then I'm gonna start painting the wheels. The wheels I am stippling color on. So brown, black, different shades of brown. What stippling is basically like pouncing the sponge onto the pizza pan to get little speckles of paint here and there. I didn't really know what look I was going for. I just knew that I wanted different colors and not just one solid color. I waited a couple of days for the wood stain to completely dry and then I sealed it with polyurethane wood stain. I went with a semi-gloss finish. I was at Dollar Tree and I found this garden sign that I actually want to glue to the front of my wagon before I put in my floral. Obviously, it's up to you how you would stage this, but I wanted to use this as a planter outside, so I went ahead and just filled this up with a few plants and I just think it's so cute for a garden. There's a wild Yorkie Poo. Get away from my flowers, Yorkie Poo. To do is we're gonna paint our pizza pans now to really get the paint to stick to your pizza pan and not scratch off easily you want to sand it lots of times I avoid doing that because I hate the sound of sanding things especially material like this so if you're gonna do that put some headphones in your ear if you just get the heebie-jeebies like I do and you get like goosebumps on your arm wear some headphones or you can do what I'm gonna do for this DIY just straight up paint these black and be very gentle with it so that I don't scratch off any paint but if you're worried about scratching off the paint make sure that you sand these down first it gives me the heebie-jeebies jeepers creepers so I'm using a black chalk paint to paint this just because I like that chalk paint dries quickly and I feel like it adheres more nicely to material like this versus acrylic paint where it's easy to just keep moving the paint off of the material with a paintbrush this at least sticks better while the paint is drying, I am going to start cutting my foam board. I'm gonna do two pieces where the height of it is going to be 14 inches. So I'm making the marking on top of the foam board and then I'll go ahead and cut it. What I'm using to cut the foam board is an X-Acto knife. I prefer X-Acto knives when cutting foam board. Over the years, I've used razors, box cutters, different things, but the X-Acto knife, I feel like does a really good job of cutting through foam board. So two pieces were 14 inches, by 30 inches, and then two pieces were 14 inches by 20 inches. Now I'm gonna take some red vinyl from Dollar Tree and I am going to place it over the foam board. When you do this, just be very careful and just kind of work slowly because the Dollar Tree vinyl, once you stick it on, it's kind of like really hard to undo. So just kind of work slowly, work out the bubbles. It's nice to have some help on hand. That is really, really nice, but right now I don't have any help. 
The good thing about the foam board and Dollar Tree vinyl, they're very forgiving to each other. So if there's an area on the vinyl that's kind of too bubbly, you can lift it up and it will be fine. It won't really rip the foam board. Now the issue with the Dollar Tree vinyl is if you get it stuck to itself, it's really hard to undo. Now listen, if you're looking for perfection when you're doing this, it's very hard to achieve perfection. So you gotta kind of be okay with there being some bubbles and maybe some imperfections in the Dollar Tree vinyl. I'm not worried about being perfect with the red vinyl, making sure it covers every area that's white red. It's just very hard to do, so you have to be okay with the thought that it might not be perfect. Okay, for the bottom of the wagon, I'm taking two pieces of foam board and I'm just gluing them together. Next up, I'm just gonna glue the sides of the wagon down. I'm gonna go in with my hot glue gun and seal in the areas where the two pieces of foam board meet. I have extra pieces of foam board that I cut off. I'm actually gonna use those as well. Just to like try to stabilize this a little bit more. Okay, it's a different day that we're working on this. You might hear Cooper in the background. However, what you're gonna do now is glue your wheels on once you have your box. He's waiting for milk and that's why he's crying. Your milk? Try your best to line up your tires perfectly so that your wagon is leveled and not leaning a little bit too much on one side. Okay, now we are going to make a handle for the wagon and I'm just gonna be using some black foam board from Dollar Tree. As you can see, it's kind of already cut. That's only because I'm using pieces I have on hand already, which this actually works out for me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a piece that's just small that can go directly under the um, wagon and then cut off a piece and glue it to that. Okay, so at the very bottom of this piece of foam board, I'm actually just going to bend it like this so that I can glue this part underneath the wagon. For the top of the handle, I cut out a rectangle and then another smaller rectangle in the middle of that to make the part where you actually put your hand, the actual part of the handle. Anyhow, I then go ahead and I glue this underneath the wagon part of it. And then as it comes up on the wagon, I glue it a little bit more and then bend it so that the piece is away from the wagon. So I have the initial part glued down just so that it stays on the wagon and doesn't fall off easily. It's a few days later again. However, I am going to go ahead and glue on these little vinyl circles that I cut out using my Cricut. Honestly, you guys, not necessary. You can paint it on if you don't have a Cricut. I just use my Cricut. I have it, so I like to use it. I'm also gonna add this wording here, and yes, I know what you're gonna say about the wording. I just don't wanna get in trouble. So I'm gonna put plushies inside of this, so I'm dumbing up the bottom with some white pillows because the plushies are small. That's what you could do, dummy this up, but you don't wanna stick anything heavy in this because obviously it's foam board at the bottom. So lightweight things, you can make big cutouts with your vinyl and, um, foam board, you can put plushies like I'm doing, light, fake, floral pieces, nothing heavy. Don't try putting your kid inside of this and then wondering why did it fall apart on you? It's decoration only. That's how I made this decorative wagon. I think it is perfect for a party, for a photo shoot, as long as the toddler isn't going to eat the foam board constantly. Should hold up. Anyways, I really hope you guys like this one because this, I at first I was like, eh, I mean, who might use it? But then I decided to go for it and I think it came out awesome. And now about our sponsor for this video, Simply Safe. Simply Safe is serious home security made simpler. All of the protection, but with none of the hassle or expenses of the old school brands. Simply Safe protects your whole home around the clock 24 7, every door, window, and room. It's backed by the best 24 7 professional monitoring in the business, ready to dispatch police, firefighters, or EMTs to your home. I've used other old school brands of security in the past, and I can tell you from experience the quality from the other brands do not compare to Simply Safe. Simply Safe's cameras are so clear, no grainy image where you're trying to figure out exactly what you're looking at. I've dealt with theft in the past, and 
the theft always happens at night. Having Simply Safe has given me that peace of mind I need to sleep better at night. Everything is so easy to install. It took us only 20 minutes to install our entire system, which includes door and window sensors, carbon monoxide and smoke detectors, motion detectors. The new wireless outdoor security camera has 1080p HD resolution, color night vision, a built-in spotlight, and an ultra-wide 140-degree field of view. All these features come in so handy, especially at night when you're trying to check on your home. I can see both the outside and inside of my home with just a click of a button on the Simply Safe app. It's so easy to do, and if anything major happens, Simply Safe's professional monitoring services are ready to dispatch police or firefighters in case of emergency. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash Mark and Bethany to learn more. For this project, I'm going to be using two pizza pans from Dollar Tree. The other thing you're going to need for this project is some foam board. Dollar Tree does carry foam board in white and in black. The first thing I'm going to do is take my pizza pan and trace the very bottom of it on top of my foam board. I'm going to go ahead and do this three times, hopefully, because I don't know if it's going to work three times on just one piece of foam board, but I'm going to attempt my best to make that work. You know what? It doesn't work. But we're just gonna like cut as much as we can out of this for another piece. Once the pizza pan outline is traced, I go ahead and I cut it with an X-Acto knife. You can use a box cutter, you know, anything you have on hand that could get through foam board. I really like using X-Acto knife. Now it's time to bring out every crafter's best friend, but also arch nemesis when it decides to burn you, your hot glue gun. And what you're gonna do is you are going to glue your foam board together. So I put the smaller piece that I cut out in the middle just like this, and then I put the larger pieces on the top and bottom of that. You're gonna take your pizza pan, flip it over so that the bottom is facing you, add some glue, and then place your foam right on top of that glue. Add more glue on top of the foam board, and then place your next pizza pan. Now I'm gonna take these half wood beads that I got from Amazon, and I'm gonna start gluing them to the foam board. This is why I used the foam board, so that I could place these beads in between the pizza pan. I needed something for them to adhere to. And on top of that, the beads that I got are bigger, so I needed a gap between both pizza pans. You can also get smaller ones of these. So if you wanna do that, you can do that and possibly get away with no foam board. Now we're gonna start painting our beads and our pans. So I'm gonna use some white chalk paint on the beads. I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna do for the rest of this. I just know that I want a base of white chalk paint on the beads. And I think that I might end up doing just like a base of white spray paint across on top of everything. So I'm gonna just at least get the chalk paint a little bit on the beads so that way it takes the spray paint a little bit better. Once I have the beads painted, I went outside and I spray painted everything with a white spray paint. You can paint the top of the pizza pan as well. I just decided to go with some spray paint to really get into the crevices of areas that are hard to reach with a paintbrush. Now that the wood and the pizza pans are painted and dried, I am going to take some gray chalk paint and a paintbrush. I prefer to use actual paintbrushes that you would use on a wall and you want it to be dry. So you're gonna dip your brush inside of your paint and then you are going to try to get a lot of the paint off of the brush. I'm gonna go in with a brown paint as well. Um, a storm's a coming, so the lighting for my video is gonna look a bit dark right now. I wanted to stress the color of my wood beads a little bit, just because I think they're just a little too white, so I'm just gonna go over them a little bit with a brush. Just to have fun with this, one of my favorite things to do when painting is doing the dry brushing technique because it ends up coming out so cool. So this is how you make a riser using the Dollar Tree pizza pans. You can also use the ping pong balls from Dollar Tree and cut them in half and use those if you want to instead of the wood beads. I'm gonna make something else using pretty much like the same technique. So this time around, I'm going to trace the front of my pizza pan versus before we traced the bottom, 
I'm tracing the front this time. And again, I'm gonna try to get as many cuts out of that foam board as I can. So that was really just two circles and then a funny little cut that I cut to go in between the two circles. I then start to glue my foam board together with the funny piece being in the middle of the two pieces of circle foam board. Again, I'm doing this so that the beads have something to adhere to. If I just glue them directly to the pizza pan, they're gonna be so easy to knock off. So this foam gives them a surface to adhere to. Once the foam is attached, I go ahead and glue on the pizza pan. Then I start to add the beads to the foam board. The beads are already painted because I'm reusing the beads from the other DIY. When you're doing your foam cuts, it's really hard to get two perfect cuts if you're doing it by hand. So don't worry if there's areas where the foam might pop out a little bit more on one of the circles and then go in a little bit more on another circle, just as long as you can get the beads to adhere to the foam. Now I am going to paint my pizza pan white and I'm using a white chalk paint. Again, I just prefer to use chalk paint because it dries more quickly and it doesn't keep smudging all around the place like an acrylic paint does to metal. Next up, I'm gonna glue on some mini beads. So again, I got these from Amazon. I'll try to link it down below. I just, I'm so bad at remembering things after the video's uploaded. I literally like upload and then I go back to filming for the next video for the next week or I have to take care of Cooper. So I'm really bad at remembering stuff. I'm gonna try to remember the links to where I got my beads, but these are smaller beads and I just painted them white. And again, it's a half bead. So it makes it really easy to glue onto the Thanks. Once the paint dried, I did another layer. That way I had a no more of, <laughs> that's Pep Cooper in the background. Anyways, I had more of an opaque look. Now I got these wall art stickers from Dollar Tree and I am just going to place them on the front of my pizza pan. And now I have a picture that I can put on the wall. To adhere to the wall, just use command strips. I'm sorry. He's, look, listen to him. He's counting in the background. It's not so fun. <laughs> Anyhow, you can hang this on the wall using command strips, and that's how you make this image. You don't have to use the wooden beads. You can use whatever you like, but it's just an idea, and you could take the idea and change it to suit what you want. For our next project, we're going to be making a tear tray with the Dollar Tree pizza pan. Now, this is something I've done for years, the Dollar Tree tear trays. But I want to share with you guys different ways you can make it and why the pizza pan I think is the best. So first off, the pizza pan is just a bigger surface than the plates. You can make uh, the tear trays with the Dollar Tree plates. As you can see, you get a lot more bang for your buck, just a lot more real estate with the pizza pan. The other thing you can use are chargers. And the chargers are actually the same size as the Dollar Tree pizza pan. You can get this at Dollar Tree, so you can go that route as well. But what I don't like is the lip of it to make tear trays necessarily because you can't really put anything on the lip of it, especially if it's like a big piece. So I prefer the Dollar Tree pizza pans the most. What you wanna do to add the height, your tears, are Dollar Tree candlestick holders. They carry different ones. I'm gonna be using the plain ones that they pretty much have at every single Dollar Tree, even like crabby Dollar Trees. Anyway, so what you'll end up doing is you'll end up gluing your candlestick to your pizza pan, whatever it is, and then add your layers. To attach everything together, I'm gonna use E6000 glue. You wanna use something that's heavy duty, not hot glue. If you use hot glue, it's so easy to disattach this stuff. So I'm gonna use E6000. And I just apply the glue on the bottom of my candle holder, place it as best as I can in the center, of my pan, which honestly, this I feel like this is always the hardest part, trying to accurately find that center. Now I'm gonna put some glue on the top of my candle holder and I'm gonna add my plate. I'm gonna go with this clear pit plate that's from Dollar Tree. I'm just gonna put it right over that. And then I will add some glue over here at my next candle holder. And then of course, I'm gonna add this bowl. You can use the tear trays for just home decor. You can see how pretty it turned out. And you can see why I like the pizza pans because there's a lot more surface space to put things on top of. And if you use more candle holders, you can add a higher tier so you can put even taller things on top of those pizza pans. The other thing you can use this for is at a party, when you're having like cupcakes or um, fruit, whatever you like, you can put it on top of the tear tray as long as like I said, there's no glue anywhere and you didn't spray paint. So make it a food safe area. 
or line the food. You can't see it, but under the pineapple, there's actually a paper towel because I wasn't sure if one of the marks on it was glue. So you could just line something under there so that the food doesn't actually touch the pan directly. This is more of a decorative tear tray that I made. And with this one, I had used the pizza pan at the bottom, two candle holders in the middle, and then one of their little pie pans at the top, all from Dollar Tree. And then I added some beads and some legs from Hobby Lobby at the bottom of this. And I just spray painted it all white. And this is actually my favorite tear tray I've ever done. So that's it for these pizza pan hacks. I really hope you guys enjoyed and it helped get your creative juices flowing whether you recreate these or not. Again, thanks to Simply Safe for being such a big supporter of this channel. I absolutely love this product and again, it'll be linked down below for you guys. I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Take care, bye.